Today, you're going to learn how to talk fast and sound like a native speaker. And you'll do this by testing your listening skills. And this test will progress from more beginner A1 to more advanced C2. Welcome back to J4S English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. Here's how this lesson will work. I'm going to say a sentence three times and you need to write down exactly what you hear in the comments. Are you ready for your first listening test? I'll say it three times. It was a cakewalk. It was a cakewalk. It was a cakewalk. Did you get this one? I said it was a cakewalk. Let's talk about was a. You can combine these together and it sounds like was a. So notice I'm linking the sounds and I'm taking that was but it's a z, z, it's a voiced sound. So I'm going to transfer that sound to a. Uh, so you hear za, za, was a, was a. It was a cakewalk. It was a cakewalk. This thing was a cakewalk, right? What does this mean to be a cakewalk? This means that something is simple or effortless. You might be familiar with the idiom to be a piece of cake. When you describe something as a piece of cake, it means simple or effortless. This is the same idiom, it's just slightly changing it to be a cakewalk. Piece of cake. Hopefully, you would say learning English becomes a cakewalk when you have a great teacher. If you agree, then put cakewalk, cakewalk, put cakewalk in the comments. Remember that you have to conjugate your verb to be with the subject and the time reference. This was a cakewalk in the past simple. This is a cakewalk in the present simple. This will be a cakewalk in which verb tense? the future simple, and this has been a cakewalk. Which verb tense? The present perfect. And also remember the article. It's always a cakewalk. This was a cakewalk. Are you enjoying this lesson? If you are, then I want to tell you about the Finally Fluent Academy. This is my premium training program where we study native English speakers from TV, the movies, YouTube, and the news so you can improve your listening skills of fast English, expand your vocabulary with natural expressions, and learn advanced grammar easily. Plus, you'll have me as your personal coach. You can look in the description for the link to learn more, or you can go to my website and click on Finally Fluent Academy. Now let's continue with our lesson. Let's try this again a little more advanced. I'll say it three times. It's a band-aid fix. It's a band-aid fix. It's a band-aid fix. Did you hear this one? I said it's a band-aid fix. Of course, it's is our contraction of it is, it's, it's, band Aid is two words, but to pronounce them like one, I'll take that D and transfer it to the vowel. Band-aid, dade, band-aid, band-aid, band-aid fix. A band-aid fix is a temporary solution to a problem. To understand this expression, you need to know what a band-aid is. This is a band-aid. This is the brand name for bandage but the brand name is Band-Aid and native speakers just refer to bandages as Band-Aids. I put Band-Aids on it, but... Remember, this means a temporary solution to a problem. You could say, filling the potholes is a Band-Aid fix. This entire road needs to be repaved. But it's just a Band-Aid fix. Now, there are many temporary solutions to help you improve your English, but not all of them are permanent. For example, relying on ChatGPT to write for you is a Band-Aid fix. Remember the article, our noun is a fix, and then Band-Aid is an adjective, a Band-Aid fix. And although a Band-Aid fix means a temporary solution, you can't say a Band-Aid solution. You must always say a Band-Aid fix because that's the word choice in this expression. Let's try this again a little more difficult. I'll say it three times. 
You can't rest on your laurels. You can't rest on your laurels. You can't rest on your laurels. Did you get this one? I said you can't rest on your laurels. Native speakers often pronounce T as a flap T, which means we don't push out that puff of air because it forces us to take a pause. You can't. So I don't say you can't. I say you can't. You can't rest on. So here you hear that T because I'm linking the two words together and I'm transferring the T sound onto the vowel. Rest on, ton, rest on, rest on. Your is pronounced in spoken English as an unstressed your, your. You can't rest on your, your laurels. This could be a hard word to pronounce depending on your native language because we have an R and an L. Lore, ols, lore, ols. So divide the sounds until you're comfortable with each sound. Lore, ols, and then you can pronounce it as one. Laurels, laurels. The expression is to rest on your laurels. We use this to say that you shouldn't become too comfortable or stagnant with past achievements, past successes, you should set new goals. You should push yourself further. You shouldn't rest on your laurels. For example, the author wrote an international bestseller, but then rested on her laurels. So she had a past accomplishment, past success with this international bestseller that she wrote, but because she rested on her laurels, it means that she didn't set new goals, she didn't push herself further, so she didn't write anything after that international bestseller. She just remained successful based on her past success, but didn't achieve any new success. Let's think about this in a language learning context. Maybe you have a past success with a high score on an exam. It's amazing that you got a band nine on your IELTS last year, but you can't just rest on your laurels. So this sounds like after your amazing accomplishment, your band nine, you stopped trying to improve. You stopped trying to improve even more. You just rested on your laurels. You had that past success and you thought you were done with language learning, which of course isn't the case. So to help motivate this friend who's resting on their laurels, you can say subscribe to J4's English and keep improving, keep learning, keep growing. Don't rest on your laurels. Let's try this one more time, the most advanced listening exercise. I'll say it three times. I'm going out for a bit. I'm going out for a bit. I'm going out for a bit. Did you get this one? I said, I'm going out for a bit. Of course, I'm is our contraction of I am, I'm, I'm. I'm going out. Again, we have that flap T because I'm not going to say out. I'm going out. I'm going out. Now, many native speakers will combine all three of these together and they'll pronounce for as more of an unstressed fur. Fur a, fur a bit, fur a bit. And again, that flat T on bit, because I'm not saying bit, for a bit, for a bit. You can still link them together even if you say for, or a native speaker commonly says for, for a bit, for a bit. Now, sometimes native speakers will pronounce the T in this case because it's at the end of a sentence, there's a period. So we have to take a pause anyway, for a bit, for a bit. I'm going out for a bit. To go out, this means to temporarily leave your current location, most commonly your home. For a bit is a time reference and it means for a small amount of time. Sorry guys, I have to go out for a bit. This is a common way that someone will say they're leaving. I'm going out for a bit. Now, where are they going? Well, remember it's more of a, they're going out temporarily. So perhaps they're going to run errands, go grocery shopping, meet a friend, or go to the movies, any small amount of time. We also commonly use this as a suggestion to say, let's leave the house 
and do something more interesting. We've been watching Netflix all day. Let's go out. Let's go out for a bit. Let's go out tonight. Now let's do an imitation exercise so you can practice these pronunciation changes and practice fast English. So I'll say each sentence again three times. And after each sentence, I want you to repeat the sentence out loud. Here we go. It was a cakewalk. It was a cakewalk. It was a cakewalk. It's a band-aid fix. It's a band-aid fix. It's a band-aid fix. You can't rest on your laurels. You can't rest on your laurels. You can't rest on your laurels. I'm going out for a bit. I'm going out for a bit. I'm going out for a bit. Did you like this lesson? Do you want me to make more lessons just like this? If you do, then put yes, 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 yes in the comments below. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And you can keep improving your English with this lesson right now.